in the last stream, we were working on finally getting around to a little bit of immersive engineering. We made our cook oven, we made an engineer's workbench, and at the very end of the last stream, we also finally managed to get a metal press, which now resides on the lower level of our platform here, allowing us to make things like plates and gears, which in turn are going to allow us to get into more advanced machinery uh, from mods like Industrial Foregoing and eventually mods like Mechanism and RF Tools. For today's stream though, I do want to focus in on trying to get the very basics of a refined storage system, because that's going to allow us to once and for all sort out our storage situation. It's going to allow us to kind of combine everything together into one interface, one terminal, and make our crafting life just so much easier. So in order to get into refined storage, uh, the quest line at least, we first have to complete the quest over here in extended crafting, that being the quest for the machine casing. Uh, this guy requires four quartz and rich iron, four steel plates, and one regular stone. None of that, I don't think, is going to be particularly difficult. We do have 4,200 steel, and so I think what we're going to do right away here is take like a full stack of steel and turn all of those into, uh, into steel plates, just in case we need a few more during today's stream. As for the quartz enriched iron, I'm fairly certain on that front that uh, the way that we're going to make it initially, at least until we can get a quartz enriched iron B, is by taking iron and another quartz and throwing both of those into our new alloy smelter. So we'll throw both those in. We're going to need a lot of this, I think, to get the basics of a refined storage system up and running. So getting this going sooner rather than later is gonna help out quite a bit. And speaking of getting things done sooner rather than later, of course, at the very end of the last stream, we crafted up our first Fluix Seeds, which we then dropped over into this pool of water here. Thankfully, Fluix Seeds do not despawn. And so uh, over the last almost 24 hours, slowly but surely, those Fluix Seeds have developed into eight pure Fluix Crystals, which we can now use in the crafting of either an ME controller or a refined storage controller. So apparently these take about 12 hours. Um, I did check on them maybe like seven or eight hours after the stream was over yesterday, and they were about 64, 65%. So I think that 12 hour number is about right. Um, so thankfully that is done ahead of time. We don't have to wait for that. Otherwise this would be a, a very long stream. I'll throw you in there. And uh, at that point, what else are we missing for this guy? We just need stone. Yeah, everything else um, is currently being cooked up and stone we should already have. So let's go check on our steel plates. Those are completely done. And over here we are a good chunk of the way through the quartz and rich iron. So if we bring all of that stuff back to our crafting station, we should have, I think, pretty much everything here to make our first machine casing. But of course, it does have to be made in that new basic crafting table that we got at the end of the last stream. So uh, let's go ahead and for now at least, throw this down right about here. Grab at least one stone. Boom, boom. And I believe that that should unlock, yeah, this quest right here, the beginning of refined storage. So in this mod pack, the recipes have been tweaked a little bit for refined storage to incorporate some of the mechanics from applied energistics. For example, in order to get the advanced processor, which we are going to need to make the controller, we have to first get the inscriber, which is in and of itself from applied energistics. Uh, before that though, there is also a quest for the charger, this is going to allow us to transform regular surface quartz into charged surface quartz, uh, which we're going to need if we want to make these uh, regular Fluix crystals here. Uh, you'll see there's an information tab. It says drop one charged surface quartz, one nether quartz, and one redstone dust into a puddle next to another and wait a moment to receive two Fluix crystals. So this is how you make regular Fluix crystals, not to be confused with the pure Fluix crystals. Most of the time, regular Fluix crystals and pure Fluix crystals are interchangeable, but there are a couple of recipes like the one for the controller here where you have to have pure Fluix crystals. These are the ones that take 12 hours to grow if you don't have accelerators. So uh, we wanna make sure that we don't use the Fluix crystals that we have, the pure ones, um, in any of the recipes because otherwise we're not gonna have enough pure Fluix crystals to make the controller, which would be bad because we don't have 12 hours. So either way, let's have a look at this uh, charger here. To make it, uh, we need five iron ingots and then two regular Fluix crystals. So as I mentioned before, we can currently make these by dropping uh, charged status quartz, nether quartz, and redstone into a puddle of water. I currently don't believe that we have any charged status quartz. We do have some status quartz dust, but I'm fairly certain that that's not gonna work. Now we can get charged status quartz by sifting crushed skystone. 
which is something we might look to do. It's only a 1 in 10% chance. Um, however, that shouldn't be too bad. You can also, I believe, generate Certus Quartz through bees. Yeah, we can't generate the charged variety. I think we are going to have to sift to get our first charged Certus Quartz. Uh, but then once we have two charged Certus Quartz, uh, or one charged Certus Quartz even, uh, we can make the charger. And at that point, we can turn regular Certus Quartz into charged, uh, charged Certus Quartz at the cost of just a little bit of Redstone Flux. And to get that going a bit, I think we should maybe set up a little uh, pod for Certus Quartz Vs, which we do have in here. In fact, I think we have quite a few of them. Yeah, we've got one, two, three, four, five Certus Quartz Bs all ready to go. So I do believe we have at least one cell left. Yeah, we do right here. Um, I think that might be our last spare cell. Yeah, the rest of these are all filled up now because, of course, previously uh, we set up the Enderman B. Uh, we also set up the Creeper B. And so if we are going to get any more bees going forward, we're going to have to set up even more rooms for them, uh, which is something Future Isaac is going to have to worry about. Um, for now, though, what do Certus Quartz bees require to pollinate? They require a block of Certus Quartz, which requires Certus Quartz. Okay, so before we put these bees down, and uh, just before I forget, let me put the uh, scraper in here. I think there is already a uh, wireless receiver under here. That is perfect, so we don't have to worry about uh, this guy getting the redstone signal. But uh, it does mean that before we put these bees down, we are going to have to do a little bit of uh, Skystone sifting. Uh, thankfully, the Skystone is not too difficult for us to get. You can make it by putting Skystone dust into a barrel filled with lava, uh, much like we've been doing with redstone to get netherrack in the past. And I do believe that, yeah, we've got quite a few stacks of, uh, of Skystone dust lying around from all of the dust sifting that we've done in the past. So uh, let's once again grab our stone barrel. Let's make sure we have at least one fluid cable, which we do, as well as the, uh, the old wrench here. And let's go see. If we can't get this to work, it's probably going to be easier as well if we do have one or two hoppers. So ideally here, if we just do something like this and kind of set up the same system we had before, we can put Skystone in at the top, and that's going to, uh, one at a time, get dropped in with a bucket of lava. Uh, we do have, you know, 1,700 buckets of lava, so uh, more than enough to keep this going for quite some time. And slowly but surely, uh, that's going to turn our Skystone and our lava into, uh, our Skystone dust and our lava into Skystone, which we can then hammer with the old ex nihilo hammers and sift to try and get some Certus Quartz. And we really only need four regular Certus Quartz, enough to make one block so our bees can pollinate, and one charged Certus Quartz to get us going. So I think 32 here should be more than enough. So let's go ahead and hammer all of that down. Let me quickly check to see if the odds are better on this with a, a, a an emerald mesh. So we currently have a 70 and 80% chance on Certus Quartz, so almost guaranteed Certus Quartz, and then a 10% chance on the charged Certus Quartz. That chance does not change with an Emerald or a Netherite mesh, so still no reason for us to make those just yet. Either way, though, back over here, let's go ahead and do a quick one of these. And yeah, that's definitely more than enough Certus Quartz for the time being. We do also get uh, some uh, seeds as well, both Nether Quartz and set of quartz seeds, which we could use if we wanted to, to get uh, pure nether quartz and pure fluix crystals. So let's go ahead and craft up uh, maybe like three or even four blocks of set of quartz here. We do have five set of quartz bees, so uh, I think four or five blocks should be fine. Let's put those in the new hive here. We can then go ahead and release these bees. I think all of which are going to be baby bees because I basically picked them up um, as soon as they arrive. Now I have done a bit more bee breeding between streams. Hopefully, yeah, there's no glass panes here, so I don't think they're likely to die. They should just work as intended. Uh, but I have done a bit more bee breeding between streams. Mostly I was trying to get to a gold bee because right now our supplies of gold are not particularly large. I think we have uh, maybe 21 gold ingots, and then maybe a further 20 gold ore, which we can, of course, double into uh, 40 gold ingots. So about a stack of gold, but we are going to need quite a bit going forward. And we can also use gold bees once we have them uh, to make more bees, such as electron bees and netherite bees, which I think are going to be quite useful going forward. Unfortunately, uh, the odds of getting a gold bee are only 10%, so 1 in 10. And so uh, despite moving the sieve bees yet again over into the, uh, the gravel room this time and breeding those with the gravel bees quite a few times, I've still yet to get any gold bees. Uh, we did get a few osmium bees, some uh, aluminum bees, a lead bee, 
and I think at least one other type of bee, maybe a few silver bees as well. Yeah, up here. But unfortunately, still not gold bees. Either way, back over here, let's grab a little bit of nether quartz. And we do need to upgrade the nether quartz draw here because we are very close uh, to 2048. In fact, we were at it just before I took some uh, nether quartz out there. Uh, and that is causing some backlog. So real quick, actually, before I make some uh, charged Surtis quartz, let's get a emerald upgrade kit. Boom. And boom. And uh, that's going to last for hopefully a little while. And then let's also grab a bit of redstone. And if we take the redstone, charged Surtis quartz, and nether quartz, and drop all of those into this puddle here. We can do one, two, three. Look at that. Fluix crystals. Nice. And so now with those two Fluix crystals, if we grab one, two, three, four, five iron, uh, we should be able to make the charger, which I believe can run on regular redstone flux or forge energy. So I think if we do something like this, yeah, that does connect. And so now going forward, if we need more charged Sodus Quartz Crystals to get more Fluix Crystals, we can take regular Sodus Quartz Crystals, which we're now going to be getting from our bees, and we can put those into the charger. And slowly but surely, if you look at the top there, it will change a charged, uh, regular Sodus Quartz Crystal into a charged Sodus Quartz Crystal. If I'm not mistaken, the time it takes can be a bit random. You'll see sometimes it happens very fast, whereas other times uh, it can take a couple of seconds. Um, you could automate this, I think, uh, with the item pipes fairly easily. But uh, for now, we don't really need that many uh, charged Soda Squats crystals. Uh, so just getting a few of these should be uh, should be more than fine. And so now we should have what it takes to make the Inscriber. This guy's made with uh, five more iron, two sticky pistons, and one Fluix crystal. We don't have any Fluix crystals, but we can, of course, make some more. Uh, now that we have more charged Soda Squats, we can also uh, temporarily eat a honey apple here so that the Twitch chat does not shout at me for uh, being hungry. And by the way, you can put multiple in here. I'm doing this one at a time just to kind of show how it works. But if you wanted to, you could do three, three, and three. And if you get them all in fast enough, uh, you do get six Fluix crystals. You can do like a whole stack of each uh, and get, you know, two stacks of uh, of, Quartz, of of Fluix crystals. That does work as well. Um, but for now, though, let's grab a little bit of wood, a little bit of cobblestone, a little bit of iron. And that should hopefully be everything to make some pistons. I'm fairly certain we have a little bit of slime left over. Yes, yeah, so we can make the sticky pistons nice and easily. And from there, uh, we should be able to make our first inscriber. And now that's going to allow us to make both the improved and advanced processes, as well as things like the basic processor, along with the construction and destruction core, all of which I think we're going to need in order to get a controller, a grid, a crafting grid, and a disk drive. All of those are items that we're going to need for a basic refined storage system, along with at least one of these 1K storage disks, but preferably even more. So let's start, I guess, with these three that we have right here. I'm fairly certain they're all made in a similar way. The basic processor is made in the inscriber with one raw basic processor, one redstone, and one printed silicon. The printed silicon is the same, I believe, through all the processors. Yeah, they all require redstone and printed silicon. It's just the processor that changes to the raw version of the version that you're making. Silicon, we can get in the inscriber with a silicon press and regular silicon and regular silicon. Uh, we can get in two ways. Eventually, we can get it through bees. I believe there is a silicon bee. Yeah, that can produce silicon combs that we can turn into silicon. For now, though, we can smelt uh, nether quartz directly into silicon. I believe we can also smelt actual nether quartz, not just nether quartz dust. Yeah, there are two types of silicon. One can be done with real nether quartz, one can be done with nether quartz dust, both of which we have. We have uh, nether quartz dust in here from sifting, and we have, of course, over 2,000 nether quartz up here from our nether quartz B. For now, we'll go with the uh, regular nether quartz just because we have so much of it, and uh, we'll throw that in here for now with maybe a little bit more coal, just to make sure that keeps going. Uh, while we wait for that to smelt up, in order to make the raw version of the processes that we're looking to make, uh, we combine up, I believe it's iron, gold, or diamonds. Yeah, with processor binding. The processor binding we can make with string and slime. Right now we have eight slime balls, but if we want, we can of course take our brown mushrooms here and right click those on the witch water, producing even more slime if we should need it. So the only thing that I think is gonna be, that we don't have just yet is the inscriber press. 
So we can make the silicon inscriber press with five charged Sirtis quartz crystals and four steel ingots in the new basic crafting table. So uh, we have six charged Sirtis quartz ingots. And then if we go ahead and grab one, two, three, four steel, over here we should have everything we need to make the silicon press. And so if we take that and some of our silicon, we can head on down to our power source. And then if we drop down the inscriber, which for now I'll put, I guess, like right about here. I believe that should connect. It does indeed. Perfect. Uh, we can put in the silicon press at the top. We can put in the silicon in the middle. And slowly but surely, uh, that will be turned into the pressed silicon that we need. Unfortunately, uh, the inscriber only allows you to put one item in at a time. So I can't put in all 14 of the uh, silicon that I have here. I have to put in one item at a time. Thankfully, I think we can automate this fairly easily with a hopper or two and maybe some item cable. So the inscriber is also a little janky in that you have to input certain resources from certain sides. So for example, here, in order to put the silicon in the middle slot, the uh, hopper or the item pipe has to insert the item to, uh, I think, either the left or the right side. It might just be the left. The right side might be for extracting. Uh, but if you want to put something in the top, you have to do it through the top slot. And if you want to put the, for example, redstone that we're going to use in the future into the bottom, you have to insert it through the bottom. So uh, this does make it somewhat easier to automate because you can't end up with, you know, silicon in the wrong slot. Uh, but it also makes it a little janky to automate because you have to have cables running around the whole machine. So I think what we'll do for now, and I keep hitting the wrong button when I turn my jetpack on. Uh, if you hit uh, Z, by the way, it shows you all of your inventory rows. So you could, for example, hit Z and then hit one, two, or three to swap your hotbar with a different row of your inventory. So if I press one, it just gives me all of the items from my uh, the top row of my hotbar, which is not really a feature I use too often, but uh, if you had something in your inventory that you needed, you can swap a whole inventory row quite quickly like that, if you're wondering what that is. Most of the time, I'm just hitting the one key. Instead of hitting V to turn my engine off, I'm hitting Z to, uh, to open that little menu up. Uh, but either way, let's grab these uh, power cables here. Let's also grab, um, I think, some item cable, and uh, let's get a chest. With the, that's the wrong one again. With the silicon here, the silicon press is not used up, so this just stays in there forever, and it's just the, uh, the silicon that gets turned into pressed silicon. Let's connect that up like so. Uh, and so we should be able to just do something like this, make sure that uh, this is set to extract, make sure that over here we have all the silicon, and slowly but surely the silicon will be inserted, turned into pressed silicon, extracted, and placed into this chest here. Um, a bit of a janky setup, definitely doesn't look particularly nice, but it is going to get the job done slowly but surely. Uh, so if we go and grab maybe a little bit more silicon out of here, we can uh, fill the hopper up and let it do its thing. While we wait for that, let's go get some processor binding. We'll make a fair bit of this. I think I'll go for at least 32, but it might be worth getting you know what, I'll go for 64. String and slime are not really something uh, that we're limited on. I think 64 should be more than enough for the time being. And then from there, the only troubling thing for us, I think is going to be our lack of diamonds. Yeah, we have two diamonds. Sorry, we have six diamonds. Because right now we still don't have a diamond bee, which is very high on my list of bees to get, by the way, along with gold. But um, we don't have a diamond bee. Six might be enough. Let me check some recipes here real quick. To make the controller, we need four advanced processors. And it is one diamond per processor, by the way. To make the grid, we need one. Oh, that's construction, not advanced. So the grid actually doesn't require a single advanced processor. And then the crafting grid requires one. So in fact, I think that five diamonds might be enough to make this happen. And we might not need the sixth diamond. Yeah, we are going to have to get a disillusion chamber in order to make the storage housing. But we'll get to that a little later on in the stream. Oh, chat is telling me that the drive down here needs two. Oh, it totally does. So we need seven diamonds in total. That's not a huge deal. We can get one more diamond. Or we should be able to get, I should say, uh, one more diamond, I think, fairly quickly, utilizing the uh, vast amounts of, uh, of gravel that we have. If we sift that, we should get one more diamond nice and quickly. And then we can use that to make all the processes that we need. So a little bit of gravel sifting later, and we are now good to go on the diamond front. Uh, we should definitely be good to go on the iron front. And I'm also fairly certain that we should be good to go on the gold front as well. 
So uh, let us have a look here. Do we have what it takes to make seven of these? We definitely do. I'm not quite sure how much of the other two processes we're going to need, but uh, just to be safe, let's get maybe like 12 of the uh, basic processor and maybe like 12 gold processors as well. From there, all we need is redstone and to head on back down to our inscriber, which is now thankfully done with the silicon. And if we take all that silicon, combine it up with redstone and the blank processor, we could again slowly but surely begin producing the processes that we're after. Again, it is rather tedious because you can only put in one item at a time. So we can, for example, put the redstone in here. That's gonna be automated. Uh, we could also, if we wanted to, put these in here as well, like with a hopper we could have on top. It might not be a terrible idea to quickly get another chest and set up some basic automation so we can let this kind of uh, passively produce these processes while we go and look at getting into the dissolution chamber, which we're going to need in order to make some of the basic drives. So chat is actually recommending that what we do here is uh, quickly grab like a block of cobblestone or something so I can build. But uh, they're recommending using this uh, Certus Quartz wrench that I've just made to rotate the inscriber. So at uh, the Certus Quartz wrench, super easy, just five Certus Quartz. Uh, normally, you would input items from the top, the left, and the bottom, and then you would pull items out of the right. If you right click with the wrench, you can turn it on its side. So now we can input from the left, the right, and the top, and then we can just have a hopper on the bottom to extract. It makes it just a little easier uh, to do all the automation. We can also just use the pipe here, of course, uh, to extract from the bottom as well. So here, I think all we should have to do is put redstone at the top in this hopper. Let's go put it in the middle. Uh, we put in, I think it's a silicon at the bottom, so in our case on the left, and then the raw processes on the right, and we can put all of those in there. And then slowly but surely, if we give this some power, I think that should work. Uh, you can put the uh, processor and the silicon, by the way, in either slot. So uh, this is obviously the other way around the way we did it previously, but uh, either slot there will work. And uh, we do have this cable set to extract. And so now slowly but surely, all of these processes will be combined with the redstone and the silicon and transformed into actual processes that we can use going forward. While we wait for that to take place, let's have a look at getting the dissolution chamber. Because again, if we're going to get storage disks, the storage housing is made in the dissolution chamber with quartz enriched iron, redstone dust, vibrant quartz glass, which we can make with the quartz glass and glowstone, quartz glass being glass and either quartz dust or certus quartz dust, both of which we have from sifting. And then the only other thing we need in there is honey, which we should have a large amount of in this tank right here. We do. We've got 5,512 buckets of honey or 5.5 million millibuckets of honey uh, in this tank ready to be used for such an occasion. So let's take a look then, shall we, at the dissolution chamber. To make this, we did make the diamond gear at the end of the last stream using our new metal press. So making that shouldn't be too difficult. And everything else here looks fairly simple. Uh, we do need some plastic, which means we are going to have to take some of the latex that we've been producing, or some of the uh, tiny dry rubber that we've been producing from latex out of the latex processing unit. And I believe all we have to do here is smelt it. Oh no, we craft it, then smelt it, of course. So uh, thankfully there is a crafting table down here. Let's do this, and I guess we'll also do this. We'll then take those up to the surface, give those a quick smelt. While we wait for that, the pity machine frame, same recipe as always, it's a four rock logs, four iron, and a block of redstone. So uh, one, two, three, four, uh, iron we have, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I did move all of the Britannia stuff between streams. I got all the mana over, and uh, the mana pool is now over here. I also simplified this setup a little bit. People did say uh, that my old setup with redstone was a little convoluted with the redstone torches and the redstone inversions and all that jazz. Um, all we've got here is redstone coming off the pressure plate, going up onto one slab, up onto another slab, and then into that hopper. But it still has the same effect of uh, stopping this hopper from sending any more items to the open crate if there are items on the pressure plate here. So we'll replace down the runic altar. Let's put it, um, I guess, like right about here. And we can, of course, get all of the, uh, the items here on ahead of time. I do think it's probably worth making a second mana spreader. We do have 
some living wood available over here. And instead of, you know, continually moving the one mana spreader that we have from the end of flames to the mana pool for the runic altar, uh, I feel like we might as well just make another mana spreader. They're really not too difficult to make. So if we just put you down right about here, that's already pointing at the runic altar, so we don't have to link it. We are, of course, going to need to get a piece of living rock, so we might as well harvest the living rock that we have here. And then any second now, this should be pretty much good to go, and uh, we should have, I believe, everything for the dissolution chamber. So we'll take the pity machine frame, head on back over to the crafting station, and let's have a look here. Dissolution chamber, do we have what it takes? We do. Beautiful. So we'll take this to the lower level here, kind of running out of space on this uh, kind of line of, uh, of power that we have, this uh, power cable. Uh, for now, I guess we can put it right here. That is going to receive power directly from the uh, thermo generator, and we can begin looking at making some of the housing. And again, really none of this seems too difficult. Over here, all of our processes are done. We'll take all of those and complete a bunch of quests along the way. Back over here, let me quickly get rid of some of the stuff that we don't need to be carrying around in our inventory at all times. So in terms of the uh, glass here, I think we have everything. Yeah, we can take some of the Sodas Quartz that again we get from sifting. I think it's uh, dust. And uh, we'll take, I guess, a few of these because we might need a few storage housing. We'll take uh, half a stack. I guess we've got a lot of glass and a lot of Sodas Quartz dust. From there, we can craft it up with Glowstone, which again, we have a large amount of, or almost a thousand, thanks to our bees. So we might as well try to just craft all those down. And then from there, we need redstone, honey, and quartz in iron. iron. Redstone we have, quartz in iron we have, with more being smelted downstairs. And then honey, if we grab a bucket here, we can, of course, move from the tank. So I'm hoping that we can just take a bucket here, right-click it here. You totally can. Uh, can I shift-click the recipe in? I cannot. That would have been too easy. Uh, let's put vibrant glass here and here. Redstone, I think it was here, here, and here, with quartz in iron along the bottom. And then, presumably, oh, of course, as soon as we get in the other bit of honey, that's going to slowly but surely, over the course of 15 seconds, produce a storage housing. So Twitch chat has pointed out that you don't have to put the ingredients in as they're shown in the recipe. You can put them in however you like, and the recipe does still work. And we're about to get our fourth storage housing here, which I think should be enough for the time being. So let's take a look then at getting the crafting grid, the controller, and the disk drive. I think the controller maybe makes the most sense and it's also gonna be the most difficult to do here because we do first have to upgrade our current basic crafting table to a tier two crafting table aka an advanced crafting table and to do that we're also going to have to craft another basic crafting table uh, thankfully we do have quite a bit of black iron and if we want we could look at getting some more black iron cooking which i think is probably well worth the investment because i think it's possible that the 40 or so black iron that we have might not be enough. And given that we can, of course, make more black ink using yet more mystical black petals with a little bit of shifting, it's probably well worth getting more going. So boom and boom, there's our second basic crafting table. Uh, let me just check. I don't think any of the other recipes require the tier one crafting table because I think, mm, I think recipes like this can only be made in the basic crafting table. You can't, for example, make a tier one recipe in a tier two crafting table, I don't think. So if we pick this one up and use it to make an advanced crafting table, and then for example, need another machine casing, we would then have to go and make another basic crafting table. So I think it's probably worth my while making a couple of machine casings here, just to make sure we have enough for the things we want to make today. And then going forward, we can always make another one if we need it later on down the line. So let's get a few more machine casing. I'll take all four here. Uh, that's fine. We have more quartz and rich iron should we need it. Now that we have those extra machine casings, let's pick this up. And then let's look at upgrading to the tier two crafting table. So for this, we need a block of gold, which unfortunately would appear to be more gold than we have. We only have six. So uh, this is where that gold bee would have come in quite useful. Instead, we're going to have to once again uh, craft this here and uh, get some gold smelting. Uh, while we wait for that to smelt, uh, what we can do here is, first of all, get rid of some of the stuff uh, in our inventory, but we can also actually go and uh, do a little bit of bee breeding to see if we can't get um, our first gold bee. Uh, let me get a couple of bee jars. And let's also grab some flint and some poppies 
because the way they breed the gravel bees is a little interesting. Unlike all of the other bees we've been breeding, uh, the gravel bees actually require multiple items in order to, uh, to breed with the sieve bees. So you actually have to give each gravel bee four flint. So one, two, three, four, and then you can give a poppy to uh, a sieve bee. And at that point, you know, they uh, give each other a special hug and look, oh, well, look at that chat. First try, that's a gold bee. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, try that again one two three four and popping and look it's another gold bee what in the world i promise you that between streams i breeded these guys like eight or nine times did not get a single gold bee one two three four and popping we got a uh an osmium bee okay so that's actually perfect because, of course, now that we have two gold bees, um, once we find a room for them, which I guess, you know, we could repurpose the diamond room. We don't have any diamond bees yet. Uh, so I could go ahead and just call, call this a gold room and then uh, place, I assume, a block of gold is what we need. Yeah, we could put a block of gold down here and uh, and use this as the gold bee room. And, of course, we can use uh, we can make a new room for uh, for the diamond bees as and when we get diamond bees. So a block of gold tier hive or tier one hive and we'll drop our gold bees down hopefully they don't die in the roof again i find if you shift right click them onto their pollinating block they tend to uh to not die quite as often because they just start pollinating and then go to the uh to the hive so that's eventually going to get us more gold but for now we are going to have to wait for this smelting over here so a little bit of gold later and we can once again make another block of gold here and so now the only thing we're missing or the only things we're missing for the advanced crafting table are the four advanced components and then one advanced catalyst so we need uh, eight advanced components which is 16 gold which we don't quite have never mind we are good to go on that front uh, the luminescence should be easier for us to make now because we do have a creeper bee so we are getting gunpowder i also think we do have some gunpowder still lying around in here we do we got quite a bit of gunpowder lying around in there as well so we'll take glowstone redstone combine that all up into some luminescence i'll take a full stack of luminescence that's completely fine and then let's make eight of these followed by one of those we're just missing one black iron for the advanced catalyst and as luck would have it we did get some black iron smelting earlier and so we have a full stack ready for us in there so back over here we will make one advanced catalyst and then one advanced crafting table which once again we can put down over here and so now all we have to do is get all of the items required for the controller so we need four advanced processors which we do have does this keep it to inventory it does perfect so we can go one two three four like that uh, we need four pure fluix crystals which we did make between streams so we can grab those and go one two three and four steel plates one two three four and then all we need now is a machine casing and skystone blocks, right? Yeah, which we can make by smelting skystone, which we can get the same way we did before. Uh, we need, what, 12? Yeah, 3, 6, 9, 12. So let's take 12 skystone dust. Drop that in to this hopper over here. Take all of that skystone throw it into our little array of furnaces and once all of this is done we can go three six nine twelve and look at that we get a controller i did notice in new versions of refined storage or the new version of refined storage we can in fact color the controller which i think i might do i think maybe we'll go for this uh kind of like orange color you know we've got the bees we've got the honey you can do the same with the crafting grid as well so uh this didn't used to be a thing before but we can actually make like a fully orange refined storage system which i think would be pretty cool so we'll take this here before i forget uh, let's also grab a orange petal and if we craft that with the pestle and mortar we can get some orange dye which we can then craft with the controller and look at that we have an orange controller you love to see it so uh, that's that quest complete as for the disk drive here we need one machine casing oh this is made in the basic crafting table <laughs> Okay, we're going to have to make another basic crafting table chat. Uh, I'm fairly certain you can't make it in here. We could try. We could get all this stuff ready and, and see if it works. But I'm pretty sure that like crafting in the middle here doesn't work. The recipe does require two cable. 
which doesn't look too bad. It's uh, redstone with glass and quartz enriched iron, all of which we should have. We do. And we might need some more of that going forward. Oh, you totally can do the recipes in the higher tier crafting table. Ooh, I think that's new. I'm fairly certain in older versions that didn't used to be the case, but either way, I'm happy to, uh, to see that. That makes my life a lot easier. As for the uh, grid here, we need a construction and destruction call, which are different from the processes. Uh, these are made from raw basic processes. So essentially the same kind of deal, but just with quartz and glowstone. We also need a illumination panel of the uh, regular dark or bright variety. To make that, we need uh, three quartz glass, two glowstone, one redstone, and one iron. Uh, the quartz glass, again, exactly the same recipe as before. So uh, let's go ahead and get a grid here. Uh, the difference, by the way, between a grid and a crafting grid, the grid allows you to view all of the items in your refined storage system, but not craft with them. The crafting grid is a grid combined with a crafting table, so you can craft with all the items in the refined storage system. So there is three illumination panel. Beautiful. At that point, all we're missing are these two cores. We are going to have to get two more uh, raw basic processes for that, but that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, does the crafting grid also require more? It doesn't. So we just need two of these. One and two. We also need uh, one nether quartz and one glowstone. So nether quartz and glowstone. Let's take those down to the inscriber. So you, you, and you. That gets us the construction core. Uh, if we do the same thing with a basic processor, a printed silicon, and a nether quartz, that gets us the destruction core. And so I think, finally, chat, we have everything that we need in order to make a regular grid. And from there, we should also have basically everything to make a crafting grid. Nice. So what we're going to do here, we do need power for our refined storage system. I think what I'm going to do temporarily is I'm going to go and steal this um, magmator up here. Going forward, we are going to have to look into getting uh, a better power solution. We do have Flux Networks installed. And now that we have an infinite source of both Ender Pearls and Blaze Rods from our Ender B and our Blaze B, we should be able to set up a wireless power solution fairly easily. We'll maybe look at getting into that uh, in the next stream. But for now, if we just do, let's say something like this, with the controller down, the controller is what needs power, so we are going to have to put some lava uh, into that magmator there. But thankfully, again, we have a large amount of lava ready to go. So I'll drop that in. That's going to produce power. From there, we can connect up our crafting grid like so. I do want to make that into an orange crafting grid to match with our B theme. So let's grab uh, yet another orange petal and craft that into some orange dye, like so. Perfect. Uh, from there, we can drop down our disk drive. Uh, again, so long as it's connected to either the crafting grid or the controller, it should be good to go. For now, we'll put it right about here. Uh, I'll probably move some of this stuff or maybe move the storage drawers um, in the future to make this look a little bit nicer, or maybe even move the crates once we get rid of the crates and replace it with disk drives. Um, but for now, the only thing we're missing to actually begin using this is an actual storage disk. So for that, we are going to have to make a storage part. The first here, the one that we're probably going to make for now, is the 1K storage disk. Essentially, each storage disk can hold a certain number of items. Beginning with the 1K storage disk, which can hold approximately 1,000 items, uh, going up to the 4K disk that can hold 4,000 or 16,000 or 64,000, uh, all the way up to the infinite storage disk from extra disks, which can hold an infinite amount of items. There are eight slots in the disk drive here, so we could, for example, put in eight 1K drives. That would give us space for 8,000 items. I don't think we have that many items in here, so I think a few 1K disks might do it. We're not going to put everything from here into our refined storage system. In fact, we should be able to hook up this uh, draw system using an external storage bus. For now, though, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. In order to make the 1K storage part, we need four quartz enriched iron, three redstone, one improved processor, and then some more resourceful honey, all of which we uh, should have, actually. So just like before, we don't have to uh, put these in any particular order. All we have to do is get all of the items in, which is like this. We'll get a second one going here, but if we take our 1K storage part and we craft that up with our storage housing, like so, 
we get a 1K storage disk, which we can then place into here. And then now what we can do is we can begin putting items directly into this crafting grid. And so now going forward, the idea is that instead of having to go through, you know, four different crates to find all our items, all of our items are going to be inside the crafting grid here. And so if, for example, we want redstone, we can just type in redstone and we, it, we just see all of the redstone that we have. Uh, if we want to craft with redstone, let's say we wanted to make a redstone block, we can shift click that recipe in and it will pull the redstone out of the crafting, uh, out of the storage disk and put it into the crafting grid ready for us to craft and use, which is going to make our lives so much easier. The only thing that's going to make it even easier is if we can get an external storage, which we should be able to do, actually. The external storage is going to allow us to connect up our draw controller to our refined storage controller, thus giving us access to everything in all of the drawers connected to that draw controller from within the crafting grid. Okay, so we've made another set of construction and destruction cores. And so back up here, I think that's basically everything to make the external storage. Yeah, we're just missing two chests. Drop those in like so. Boom, boom. And so now chat, if we do this and this, uh, connecting the draw controller up to the normal controller from refined storage, we can now see all of the stuff that we have in our storage drawers from within the crafting grid here. Um, I also believe on the left, we can make this um, a little bit bigger, albeit not too much bigger. Uh, if you go too big, it goes off the screen. That will make it uh, medium, I guess, like so. Um, I also do like auto search selected. It means if I right click, I can just start typing and it uh, just begins doing it uh, in that sex. It's auto selected this bar at the top here. Um, but now everything in here is in the crafting grid. And between streams chat, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and make more of these 1K storage disks so that I can move everything out of all of our storage crates here into disk drives. Uh, and thus going forward, uh, instead of having to like grab items from this wall and then craft it in here, we should just be able to craft everything that we want inside of this crafting grid. And at some point in the future, uh, we could even look at getting a wireless crafting grid, allowing us to craft wirelessly wherever we are in the base, which is going to be super useful. But for now, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up the Skybeast portion of today's stream there.